here we back yeah we back now today we're gonna be talking about kamala harris reveals her plan for black men now let's get into it man first things first let me give a shout out to my brothers man because y'all made the temperature so hot right y'all raised the temperature so hot that the democrats had to do something that they haven't done that they've never done which is speak to the black man directly which is actually call out the black man by name and actually bring something to the table uh for the black man for the first time in modern history these politicians had to bring out a specific agenda for black men had to really call us out and address us directly something that we haven't seen in the 21st century as we already know for many years now black men have been saying that they are not respected in the democratic party their voices and concerns are not acknowledged by the democratic party and a lot of black men like myself who like i mentioned in my last video a lot of us feel like we are politically homeless you either have become uninterested in politics altogether and some of y'all were so disillusioned that you began to look towards the other side and started going with the republicans and the democratic campaign strategists they seen the writing on the wall they seen what was going down so they had to bring out obama right they had to bring out obama from retirement they had to call up obama and be like listen man you got to talk to the black man and surprisingly because i'm sure the democrats did not expect that a lot of black men told obama to get lost right a lot of black men told obama to kick rocks and i don't know what's going down but the democrats must be panicking because a few days after that i seen kamala harris he released this the so-called uh agenda for the black man right yeah so we're gonna talk about that now let's play that clip again where barack obama was talking crazy talking about oh the reason why you don't want to vote for kamala harris is because you are misogynist it's because you hate women run the clip i'll be right back you're thinking about sitting out or even supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you because you think that's a, a sign of strength because that's what being a man is putting women down now, I already made a video responding to Barack Obama. I had to really dissect Barack Obama and let him know that, listen, big bro, you talking crazy, you talking ridiculous. The black man is not a misogynist. In fact, I raised the argument that the black man is the most enlightened uh, race of man to ever walk the face of the earth. Like I told you, it was the black man who was the first man to elevate a woman to the status of head of state, right? The first female head of state rose to power back on the continent of Africa. The first man to elevate his woman to the status of royalty was the black man. While the white man was in Europe rolling around in shit and knocking his woman over the head with a club, the black man had the black woman sitting on the throne. All of this is documented history. All of this is documented fact right you can ask the ancient romans when the romans tried to invade africa 2000 years ago they'll tell you it was black women sitting on the throne you can ask the europeans when it came to west africa a few hundred years ago it was black women still on the throne and on top of that i had to tell barack obama listen when you were in office your foreign policy is the reason why there's millions of black women on the african continent having to deal with jihadist insurgencies because you decided to assassinate gaddafi and destabilize the entire sahil region which unleashed a wave of terrorists and armed bandits all throughout the region so you want to talk about oh putting putting black women down black women are dying because of your policies when you were in office so don't come talk about the black man the black man this the black man that sit your ass down anyways man let's get back to uh kamala harris all right, this is the Democratic margin among black men under the age of 45 in presidential elections. You go back to November of 2012, what do you see? You see Obama by 81. Clinton only won him by 63. Then we're all the way down to Biden last time around yeah. by 53. A tremendous drop already. And then you take a look at the average of the most recent polls and Kamala Harris is up by only 41 points. That is about half the margin that Obama won them by back in November of 2012. And this, I think, is, you know, when Barack Obama goes in last week when he was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, essentially talking to young black men, he made it seem like it was a Kamala Harris-specific problem. Uh-uh. This is part of a long-standing yeah. trend of young black men moving away from the Democratic Party, and Kamala Harris is just the latest to face that magnitude of black, younger black men going towards the Republican. That was, was Now... The Democrats have nobody to blame but themselves. They have nobody to blame but themselves, right? Sometimes we have to look in the mirror and take accountability, right? You obviously took the black male vote for granted. Obviously, the black female vote was already in the bag, already locked in. But obviously, you guys bring things to the table for the black woman, right? The black woman understands that at the Democratic Party, she has a home, right? 
she's respected and venerated within the democratic party right but the black man like i said a lot of black men feel politically homeless right they go to the republican party they over there having a clan rally right they having a neo-nazi party you go over to the democrats they talking about the black man ain't shit right the heterosexual cis hetero patriarchal black man misogynistic black man you know what i'm saying they just talking shit about the black man 24 7 night and day and what made it worse is the democratic party always tried to separate the black woman from the black man even with barack obama he tried to do the same thing he tried to say oh the reason why the black men aren't voted democrat is because they're misogynist it's because they hate women it's because they hate the black woman right the democrats love trying to punch down on the black man oh the black man is a misogynist the black man is is, is homophobic the black man is is archaic you know they always try to to beat the black man's back in right and still the black man shows up in large numbers to vote for them right so now like i said you see the trend in each election more black men walking away from the table more black men walking away from the table more black men walking away from the table so much so that now the democrats you know at the last minute right the elections like in like ne next week <laughs> you know they want to bring out a plan for the black man they want to bring out a plan for the black man and i think it's because barack obama's attempt at trying to reach out to the black man backfired so much and was received with so much pushback that i think they realized that they actually made a situation worse right so now if you had some folks that were kind of in the middle that weren't gonna vote that wasn't you know not interested now because you went around you know on, on a world tour talking about oh the black man oh he's a misogynist you, oh you don't want to see a woman in charge oh the black man oh you're so archaic oh my god you're not progressive this that and the third so now you didn't push some black man to say man fuck it now now i'm voting for trump now because you're talking crazy right and that's the reason i think that she had brought this plan out at the last minute I think that's the reason why she did this press release. Oh, man, the opportunity agenda for the black man. Oh, we got to talk to the black man. I mean, yeah, I think this is why. I think the temperature has risen so hot that they have to talk to the black man now. You see, back in 2020, black men had the same thoughts and concerns. I remember because I, I was one of those black men, too. You know, but what they tell us, Joe Biden was like, man, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. You ain't vote for me. This, that, the third, you know, blah, 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 blah. Right. They just ignored the black men as they always do. Right. So now, like I said, the trend is going in a certain direction. So they had to do something. They had to do something. So anyways, let's examine this so-called agenda uh, for the black man. Take a look up on the screen. One million fully forgivable loans of up to twenty thousand dollars for black business owners and others looking to start businesses. Now, obviously, she has to put in um, black business owners and others, which means the other uh, members of the Democratic coalition, which means other minorities like white women, white gay men, uh, you know, white uh, transgenders, things like that. Yeah. Now, obviously, she has to put in the words um, black business owners and others, because I guess it's kind of against the Constitution to give out loans based on race. But when you throw in that loophole, like I said, other minorities get to have access to those loans, such as white women from, you know, old money families who are already rich. <laughs> you know, so I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, thanks for speaking to the black man, at least. But, you know, like I said, these loopholes are kind of eh, kind of cancels it out. But anyway, let's continue. The second um, piece of the agenda where it says a national initiative to focus on black men's health. Basically, uh, when I went on her website, basically a national initiative to focus on diseases that particularly affect black men, such as um, sickle cell diabetes, uh, prostate cancer, things like that, making health care more affordable. Also, you know, a good thing. But like I said, something that will benefit all Americans. It's not really, you know, not something tailored for black men specifically. Everybody who's sick is going to benefit. But like I said, they're going to throw the black man tag on it. Which, like I said, I appreciate the gesture, but this, these are not things that are specifically tailored for the black man. But like I said, I appreciate the gesture nonetheless. Let's continue. In the next point, they talk about more investment in education, mentorship and training programs designed to funnel black men into good paying high demand jobs in fields where they're underrepresented and desperately needed like teaching. OK, I mean, yeah, I mean, we do need, you know, black male uh, teachers and um Man, listen, we just need we just need fathers, man. That's all that's, that's all we need. You know, the Democratic Party, unfortunately, they don't believe in the black family, right? They don't believe in the black family. They don't believe in the concept of black man, black woman, black child. 
And you know they don't because they don't speak to us as a unit. The Democratic Party, they speak to us separately, right? They tell the black woman one thing, then they tell the black man something else. They don't speak to us as if we are one unit. And in fact, you could say that the Democratic Party likes to divide the black man and the black woman instead of having us come together. The Democratic Party doesn't encourage black women to find her black man and have her black children and have her black family. They tell the black woman, listen, you're doing so amazing by yourself. Look at you killing the game by yourself. Look at the black woman doing it all by herself, right? They don't talk to the black woman in terms of the family unit. But in the family unit, there's something called the black father. And the black father is going to be there to provide the mentorship. It's going to be there where you don't have to invest in mentorship because the black father is already there. Now, they said that they want to invest to have more black male teachers. Now, here's the thing. Most black men don't really want to live on a, on a salary of a teacher, unfortunately, right? Teachers should be paid millions of dollars for the service they provide to society. But unfortunately, teachers are not paid equivalent to the service that they provide. And yes, I agree that we do need more black male teachers, but we have to ask a question. Are black women trying to be with black men who are living on a, on a salary of a teacher? I don't know. You know, I don't know. We seen what happened with Ebony K. Williams last year. She said she don't want to be with a school bus driver. Right. But we need black men to drive the bus. We need black men to, you know, be the garbage man. We need black men to be teachers. But are the women ready to partner up with these men on the salary of a teacher, on the salary of a, of a garbage man? I think the garbage man make decent money. But are the women trying to be with a bus driver? Right. Y'all remember last year, it was a whole crazy debate. Right. Well, a lot of women said they don't want to be with a bus driver. I don't want to be with, with a guy with this type of job. This job is not prestigious enough for me. Right. So are the women trying to be with those men that are valuable to society? But are those women trying to partner up with those men and start a family? That's the question we got to ask. Right. Because a community is a collection of families. Like I said, but the Democratic Party doesn't believe in the black family and they encourage the black woman to either be by herself or get with a white man. So that's the conundrum. Now, let's continue. Now, they say they want to invest in education and to funnel black men into uh, good paying high demand jobs. Now, I'm not sure what they mean by funneling black men into good jobs. I mean, I understand what they mean by, you know, investing in the school system, increasing the quality of education. Uh, but at the end of the day, nobody can really funnel somebody into anything. That's not how life works in order to get a high paying career. Um, it's not going to be because of a government program. It's going to come down to your connections, your work ethic, your personal ambition, your determination, um, things like that. Right. So, uh, Kamala Harris can't, you know, hold your hand into a good job. You know, you got, <laughs> you got to get that shit on your own, bro. And at the end of the day, it still comes down to the black family because, when I was a kid, it was my mom and dad. It was my it was my cousins, my auntie that was helping me with the homework, helping me understand the, the lessons for the day. Right. So at the end of the day, man, these things come down back to the back to the black family, you know, investing in your education. My father invested in my education. That's the black family. Right. You're talking about mentorship. My mentorship came from the men in my family, the men around me. Right. The black family. So, you know. The Democrats don't want to acknowledge that. But listen, the one thing you don't believe in, which is the black family, that is really going to be the source of everything you're trying to uh, promote. Like you can't really replace the black family. You know, I know you, I know you want to, but you can't do it, man. And like I said, this is where some brothers, you know, run off to the Republican side, because in, in a lot of brothers minds is this. Right. If the economy is better, I got more money in my pocket then I can do more for my family. So really, if you ask me. Um, Kamala really should have just rolled out an entire, uh, you know, five point plan or whatever on how she's going to get the economy back booming again. To be honest, that's really what a lot of brothers want to hear, man, because Trump is basically running on the nostalgia of the economy back in like 2017, 2018. You know, he's basically running off that nostalgia. A lot of folks are voting for Trump because they believe that, you know, the economy is going to be resurrected back to, you know, 2016, 2017. So even though he has not even rolled out a single agenda for black men specifically in particular, but just the nostalgia of the old economy back in 2017, a lot of folks are simply voting based off that, um, based off the, you know, reminiscing on the past, basically. So if you ask me, Kamala needs to focus her time on trying to show the black man how she is going to implement policies that will get the economy back booming again, right? Of course, it's noble that you want more black male teachers, and that's amazing, right? But these women not trying to be with teachers. They're trying to be with 
business magnets and <laughs> you know these women trying to be with you know moguls and, and titans of industry they're not trying to be with you know the guys teaching science class that's simply the world we live in so back in 2017 we had more money in our pocket we had more money to spend so kamala needs to show to the black man how we're going to get more money to spend to get the economy back booming again now the next point they talk about supporting regulations to protect black men and others who invest and own cryptocurrency i'm not even going to waste my time on this um not even going to waste my time on that uh, the average black man is not sitting up on the crypto markets and trying to get rich quick on the crypto and trying to buy some <laughs> some ethereum like you know i mean that was cool back in like 2018 and shit like that but i mean come on man come on bro let's continue the next point legalizing recreational marijuana and creating opportunities for black entrepreneurs in this budding industry <sighs> i mean listen man similar to the ones before this is not something that's exclusive to black men, right? The black man is not the only one smoking weed. You know, I mean, everybody smoking some weed. So I think it's kind of, I don't know. I think it's kind of tacky to say you're rolling out an agenda for black men. And then you're talking about smoking weed, right? Because black men are not the only demographic in the United States that smokes weed. And, you know, if you get caught with a little bit of weed, I mean, you go to court, you know, they're going to throw that shit out. A little misdemeanor and probably going to throw the whole case out altogether. So it's not really on the top of the agenda for black men, to be honest. I don't think any black men stressing about, you know, legalizing weed. You know, most black men still support their local uh, pharmacists, you know, their local street pharmacists. Most black men are more comfortable uh, going to the local street pharmacists instead of going to the dispensary anyway. So anyway, let's continue. In summary, I just think that Kamala made uh, a number of mistakes on this uh, campaign trail. I think a, a number of mistakes. Uh, her first mistake was trying to lean into a black identity, right? I think she didn't have to do that. I think she made her life way more complicated than it had to be. Um, a second mistake was trying to isolate the black man, right? Sending out Obama to wag his finger at the black man. Bad mistake bad mistake bad mistake you know trying to scapegoat the black man before the elections bad mistake bro major mistake i think all of her energy should have been focused into how she's going to get the economy back booming i think that that's really should have been the playbook and the strategy from the beginning only thing you should have been trying to do is just show to the world show to the country how you are going to get the economy back on track that's all that anybody really wants to hear that's what most black men are trying to hear. Like I said, if the economy is booming, the black man got more money in his pocket. If the black man got more money in his pocket, the black woman is happy. The black child is happy. Everything is lit. Everything is lovely. That is how you win the vote. That's how you win the black male vote, right? That's how you win the black male vote. If you want to implement a policy that's going to benefit black men in the entirety of society, then like I said, get the economy back on track. That is it. And that is all. Don't try to scapegoat the black man. Don't try to cause division between a black man and a black woman by saying the black man is a misogynist. The black man hates his woman, things like that. Because all you're doing is just turning away possible voters. All you're doing is just causing a division inside the community. And I want to give a shout out to Nina Turner, who actually spoke on this as well. Run the footage. I'll be right back. This other issue I want to bring up is a problem, too. Why are black men being lectured to? Why are black men being belittled in ways that no other voting group? Now, a lot of love for former President uh, uh, Obama, but for him to single out black men is wrong. And some of the black men that I have talked to have their reasons why they want to vote a different way. And even if some of us may not like that, we have to respect it. So unless President Barack Obama is going to go out and lecture every other group of men from other identity groups, my message for Democrats is don't bring it here to black men who, by and large, don't vote much differently from black women. Now, like I said, the Democrats brought this on themselves, right? Because for so long they took for granted the black male vote. Now you have a lot of brothers in open rebellion, either not going to vote at all or they voted for Trump just to punish the Democrats. And all of this could have been avoided if you didn't wait at the final hour to show the black man a molecule of respect. It didn't have to come to this. It didn't have to be this way. Now, like I said, I'm, I'm voting for y'all, but you know, like I said, I gotta keep it real with y'all. 
I gotta keep it real. I gotta keep it real. Now, I wanna examine some conversation that I see happening on social media. This lady said, black people did not colorize Obama the way y'all doing Kamala. Y'all was quick to say my president is black. What has changed? The gender? Now this lady insinuating that, uh, oh, the black man is misogynistic. Oh, the black man, you know, it's because she's a woman, right? It's because she's a woman. You know, I don't know why y'all running with that narrative so crazy. But that's why I said that Kamala should have focused on the policy from the beginning, mainly economic policy. She should have invested all of her energy into showing that she has the superior economic policy. She wasted too much time talking about, oh, I'm a black woman and this and that and the third. And I was raised and I went to HBCU with the AKAs and, you know, I'm, I'm down with the black community. I'm a black woman. You wasted too much time trying to play the black card. You don't got it. Like you got a white husband. You can't play the black card, baby girl. You can't play the black card. You can't be coming around talking about I'm a black woman. Then you got Obama coming out trying to defend you talking about, oh, these women are our mothers. My mother not married to a white man, bro. My mother not married to a white man. So you can't be trying to compare Kamala Harris to, to my mother and things like that. My mother been rocking with a black man since the 1980s. <laughs> you feel me? So, you know, she should have not played into the identity politics. I feel like that kind of sidetracked the whole campaign because instead of talking about her policies, everybody was focused on, oh, is she really black? Is she really black? Oh, I think that's I think that was stupid. Right. You led with a white man. We don't got to talk about blackness at that point. You know, anyways, uh, let's continue. This person said Barack chose a black wife. Him and Michelle have black kids. When a black man chooses a white woman, some of y'all say that he hates his race. I don't hear that about Kamala though. Now, I lay this at the feet of Kamala's uh, campaign strategist. I think that, I think that, like I said, she played into the identity bullshit way too heavy. Oh, I'm a black woman. I'm a black. Oh, the first black woman. The first black woman. I think you played into that so heavy to where like you tried to do the obama 2.0 like this this the uh, obama part two but you got to understand you cannot do what obama did obama came in the game with a black woman on his arm from chicago with some beautiful black daughters so you can't be obama part two and her campaign team should have understood this right the dynamics are different here let's continue this lady said barack would have not been my president with a white wife exactly now i appreciate this uh woman's honesty right that's why i said kamala should not have leaned into identity you see barack obama could have leaned into identity because it was like the perfect storm for barack everything lined up perfectly and y'all underestimate how much that black wife propelled him to the white house the imagery of it he probably got millions of black female votes just off the fact that he was a black man with a black wife he didn't even need no policy. <laughs> you know, Barack didn't even need no policy. Just the fact that he got a black wife, the black woman was like, man, that's our guy. We rocking with Barack. But I don't understand why folks really try to lean into Kamala's blackness so heavy when you know that she's not even about that life, you know, but it is what it is, man. Let's continue. This person said the Democrats understand a black man with a non black wife would be an automatic losing ticket. They would never attempt to roll a candidate like that out, no matter how great he was. Ask Obama. He'll tell you I'm kicking facts. That's a fact. That's a fact. But like I said, in the black community, there's this double minded uh, hypocrisy. Right. So if the black man got a got a white wife, it's not acceptable. Right. But if the black woman got a white husband, they throw in celebrations, they throw in parades in the middle of the Times Square. So I think that maybe Kamala's campaign strategist probably we're banking on that right we're banking on the fact that they know that okay we cannot bring out a, a black male candidate with with a white wife but i think they'll accept a black woman with a with a white husband i think they were i think they were banking on that right i i don't think they were expecting any pushback on that it don't work man it don't work you cannot be obama 2.0 and you laid up with a white man i mean listen <laughs> it doesn't take high level intelligence to understand that another reason why you know some black men are kind of disillusioned with the Democrat Party is because they feel like not only is their voice not respected and acknowledged and their concerns are not even taken into account, but there seems to be a trend within the Democratic Party that the only type of black women that get elevated to the highest levels of power are those that have a white husband in their bed. 
Kentonji Brown Jackson, the first black woman on the Supreme Court, married to a white man. Kamala Harris, vice president, married to a white man. The Democratic Party obviously has a preference for so-called black women who aspire to assimilation. And they're obviously sending a clear message to our young black girls on the type of woman that they should aspire to be like. And it's ironic because... When you look across the board, whether it's the working class families or middle class professionals or even the wealthy elite families, the vast majority of black women are married to black men. That's a fact, right? And when you tally up the amount of black women married to white men, it's such a tiny amount. It's, it's a minuscule pairing, but they make such an outsized percentage in the highest levels of power in the Democratic Party. So to me, that's not a coincidence. That's a pattern. And in fact, they actively glorify this imagery. I remember when Kentonji Brown Jackson was selected by Joe Biden for the Supreme Court position. And then I seen articles popping up in uh, New York Post, in the uh, in Stanford University, right? Take a look up on the screen. They was talking about why more black women should consider marrying whites. They published this article in, uh, in Stanford University, in some Stanford University publication, as well as the New York Post. Y'all lucky I didn't have a YouTube back then because I would have gotten y'all ass about this shit. And then when you dive into the article, it said this. Two of the most powerful positions in the United States government will soon be held for the first time by black women. Kamala Harris and Ketanji Brown Jackson. Kamala Harris, as we all know, is the vice president. And Ketanji Brown Jackson could soon become Supreme Court justice. But Harris and Ketanji Brown Jackson also share a personal attribute that is equally noteworthy. Each has a white husband. Now, why was this article published in in Stanford Law in, in a Stanford Law School publication and the New York Post. Right. Listen, like I said, man, the Democratic Party been on some bullshit and you wonder why black men are becoming more disillusioned with this party. Anyways, man, let's take a look at some more reactions on social media. Nina Turner. Shout out to Nina Turner, man. Shout out to Big Sis. You know, she said this reminder, black men are the most progressive male voting bloc in the country. Like I said, man, the black man is the most uh, enlightened uh, man to have walked the face of the earth The first man Like I said the first man Yeah Anyways This brother said And the white men they love to put on a pedestal Are the most reactionary voting block in the country Yeah man It's crazy right They they telling them They telling them go get you a white man Meanwhile the white man talking about We gotta vote for Trump We gotta take the country back Ah, <laughs> uh, Let's continue This person said the men they hype up the most be ready to destroy everything as long as whites stay on top. That's crazy. But all in all, man, like I said, Kamala Harris reveals her plans for the black men. Like I said, in summary, I'm just I'm just proud of y'all boys, man, because y'all made the Democrats buckle under the pressure. You know, they, it's the final stretch up until the elections and the temperature is so hot that they decided that they got to come speak to the black man. They got to come to the table. And address the black man so i gotta salute y'all brothers for definitely you know it's been a long time coming it's been a long time coming but y'all made them finally acknowledge you directly so you know if anything you can you can take consolation in the fact that you definitely you know you finally got the democrats to get on their knees and and uh pay tribute you know pay homage and show respect and even though this was a small victory i just want to say that as black men we cannot wait around for political parties or politicians to come hand us a plan i mean it's nice to be recognized and acknowledged but the real power comes when we can influence the political landscape and bring our own agenda to the table right it's not about sitting back and hope I, and hoping somebody gives you what you want or gives you what you need it's about lobbying for what you want and in order to lobby effectively you're going to need money unity and cooperation you got to move as a unit right no division and honestly as black men there's so much diversity amongst us in terms of um, ideology right some black men are pan-africanists some black men are socialists some black men are american nationalist patriots some black men are republicans some black men are devoutly religious some black men are atheists some black men are businessmen some black men are working men right some black men are coming out of prison some black men come from wealth and privilege we have so many different um beliefs and ideologies and perspectives and experiences that it makes it hard for us to get on the same page politically and it makes it hard for a political party to come with an agenda that'll make us all happy because we have so much diversity amongst us so if we want you know if we want to ma really make things happen we got to figure out what are our common goals and then move together based on those common goals right power respects power 
And right now, other groups are playing the game of power, right? When you look at the Israeli lobby, for example, the Democrats, what they offering you, the, the Democrats giving you weed to smoke, right? They're giving you the, the Democrats giving you weed to smoke and some business loans, right? Meanwhile, you know, the Jewish man, he getting rocket launches and military planes and all type of crazy shit to go blow up the Palestinians. And that's because he is able to lobby effectively, right? And that's the difference because you do not lobby effectively. All you get is some weed to smoke, right? Meanwhile, the Jewish man, he's getting all type of crazy shit to go knock off the Palestinians. So, you know, like I said, man, we got to graduate to the next level, right? We were able to put enough pressure on the establishment so they can hear our voice. Now we got to move to the next step, right? We got to we gotta start lobbying, you know, on a high level, right? Lobby on a high level, man. So instead of them bringing us an agenda, we are bringing them an agenda and we got a big bag of money to back it up. That's how you do it, man. That's how you do it. Anyways, man, this your boy Never Card. That's Celine back in the building. Yes, indeed. Cash app in the description. Support the channel, man. Support the channel. Support the album. Peace. No. Feel like I'm 75. None of your team be full of them traders. You know that can never be mine. I'm grabbing a thought when I drive. I'm back in my zone and we young. She said that she ready to come be my wife. Yeah, hoping I don't do her wrong. I gave her my word in this bone. I'm whipping the best like a lamb. I mean, no chicken and lamb. Accustomed to call me the man. I never be up on the grand. I'm keeping that way undercover. She want me to tell her I love her. I told her I'm breaking the rules. I told her we making the news. Back in my city, they loving me. Standing alone, I'm a hundred deep. Enemy plotting is still in reach. They trying to make sure that we underneath. Trying to make sure that we never make it. Coming for power, come get acquainted. Coming for everything that I wanted. Feeling like Drake, but I really wrote it. Feeling like Kendrick, I'm checking names. Gotta roll up while I go insane. Got so much stress, I've been getting away. Stuffing these racks in this Louis case. One thing for certain, I'm about to check. Keeping 100 and nothing less. Stick with the family since day one. Had to stay down in my day come. Had to stay down, but I'm never patient. Hop on the mic and I'm motivated. Hop on the mic and I drive a classic. Haters can't see me, they copy glasses. Back in the studio, make it match. Got a new tape and it's in production. Back on my business, I got a budget. Staying low key when I'm out in public. Feel like I'm 75. None of your team be full of them traders. You know that can never be mine. I'm grabbing a thought when I drive. I'm back in my zone and we young. She said that she ready to come be my wife. Yeah, hoping I don't do her wrong. I gave her my word in this bone. I'm webbing the best like a lamb. I mean, no chicken and lamb. Accustomed to call me the man. I never be up on the grand. I'm keeping that way undercover. She want me to tell her I love her. I told her I'm breaking the rules. I told her we making the news. Making it new, making it new.